What's up, Night Owls? Today I'm going to be summarizing Doric the Druid's backstory, all of which is covered in the book Druid's Call. I'm also going to talk about some of the tie-ins with the D&D movie Honor Among Thieves. This video is going to contain light spoilers for Honor Among Thieves and heavy spoilers for Druid's Call. This video is pretty much going to summarize the entire book, so you don't have to read it. Also, I'm not going to go in the same order as the book because the book does these flashback sequences to her childhood. I'm just going to go in chronological order from birth to movie. And the events in the book happen over the course of one year, and the book ends one year before the Honor Among Thieves movie. At least I speculate as much. The reason I think this is because Edgen and Holga have been in Revels in prison for two years when they make their escape. It says so in the movie. In the case of Edgen, Darvis, and Holger Kilgore. This is the second year of incarceration for the crimes of Grand Larceny and Skullduggery. And in the book, after one year of druid training, Doric hears about a pair of thieves, a bard and a barbarian, who are arrested and thrown in prison. This means the events in the book end one year before the movie starts, at the latest. This all really depends on when it is that Doric hears about Edgen and Holga being arrested versus when they were actually arrested. Okay, that out of the way, let's talk about Doric's birth. Doric was born to two human parents and was locked in an attic and given food through a pulley system. In this attic, there's a bale of hay with a couple of blankets, which she uses as a bed, and there's a window that she looks out at this tree, and that's how she marks the passage of time. The tree changes with the seasons. After a few years living in this attic, she notices that her mother is pregnant and eventually gives birth. So in her excitement, she decides to split her haystack and give her favorite blanket to her sister, assuming that her sister is about to be moved to the attic with her. After a few days, Doric starts to get worried that her sister is never brought up to the attic with her. And after a few years, Doric notices that her sister is different than she is. Doric is watching her sister through the window and notices that she doesn't have horns and doesn't have a tail. So that's when she starts to notice that she's different and that may be the reason that she's in the attic. So she starts planning her escape. Well, not so much of an escape, more of a, I want to go play with my sister. So she escapes, not that difficult, and her mother notices her and calls her over to have some tea with her. Her mother poisons the tea, and as Doric is going unconscious, she hears her parents arguing about what to do with her. She later wakes up in the middle of the woods, wrapped in a blanket, and realizes that her parents have abandoned her here. Over the course of a few weeks, she starts learning how to forage for food and finding shelter, and she also learns how to be sneaky and hunt from watching other animals. And throughout all of this, there's this internal conflict. Why was I abandoned? What's wrong with me? And this sort of sets the stage for her character development. Eventually, a flood completely destroys her shelter and nearly drowns her until a wood elf named Leah Varus saves her life and brings her back to her wood elf village. The woman that found her is an elder in the tribe, and she decides to raise Doric as her own, and the council of the tribe approves of it. The Wood Elves are intrigued that she was able to take care of herself out on her own in the woods, and overall, they're generally pretty nice to her. She even makes friends with a girl named Toriath, and Toriath is eight years old and comments how she is only slightly older than Doric, so Doric is around eight years old at this time. As Doric is growing older, she receives ranger training from the Wood Elves, but she is absolutely terrible at it to the point where the other rangers will actually make plans around Doric's inevitable failures. For example, they'll send Doric to shoot her bow at a boar, and assuming that Doric will miss, they will reposition so that they can ambush the frightened boar. After a hunt, Doric is sent on a scouting mission with her best friend Toriath to investigate some disturbances in the woods. What she finds is that humans are chopping down trees and clearing the land very close to the Wood Elf settlement. Because all the animals are being evicted, a brown bear attacks Doric and her friend. Doric accidentally turns into a brown bear herself and holds the bear off. And at this point, all the Wood Elves know, oh, she's a druid. Or at the very least, she has some nature affinity, which will allow her to be trained to become a druid. The Wood Elves confirm this by sending Doric to a grove to commune with a nature spirit that lives in a tree. And it's here she finds these druidic bracers, which is what she's wearing in the movie. These bracers belong to an old druid, and it's implied that this old druid is now an owl spirit that's been following Dork around since she was a little kid. So all of the wood elves start prepping Dork to be sent away for druid training because their wood elf tribe doesn't have a druid at the moment, and they're going to need one really soon. Real quick note here, in the movie, the wood elf village and the Emerald Enclave are one and the same thing. When the party goes to visit the Emerald Enclave, it is in fact this Wood Elf village right outside Neverwinter. This is the same location that's in the book. What's weird is that her druid training takes place very, very far away, outside of Waterdeep, and she has to travel there. So either the Emerald Enclave moved from 
where the training took place in the book to this Wood Elf village outside of Neverwinter for the purposes of the movie, or it was just a rewrite. For brevity, I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail about the journey to the Emerald Enclave. It's not very eventful. She visits the town, gets mistreated by some humans. She does get her sling while she's in town. While visiting a weapon shop, she has a conversation with her friend about how it's impractical for her to be carrying around a bow. And the exact quote is, the bow is fine, but you can't really hide it. If she looks harmless, people will get close and then she can get them. So while she's at this weapon shop, she picks up a sling and clips it to her bracer. Also, I think part of the reason that she uses a sling is because she's so terrible with the bow, but it's not brought up in the scene. At this point in the story, the two wood elves that have been escorting her leave and go back to the village and she's on her own for the rest of the journey. She encounters Simon the sorcerer on the way and it's a very brief meeting. Simon is trying to fix the well in this small town and Doric is able to help out by identifying the fact that the well's mortar is starting to wear and that the well just needs to be replaced and it's back on the road from there. After Doric reaches the Emerald Enclave, she meets with the other druid recruits and she becomes friends with a furbolg named Joannis. A human named Leander bullies her for reasons that aren't really explained. The book just kind of implies that he's a mean dude. The recruits start their druid training by learning how to make seeds blossom, and then they move on to elemental bending techniques, and then finally, wild shape. Okay, let's talk about Doric's amazing wild shape, because there was a lot of talk about it when the trailer hit, because she was able to wild shape into an owlbear, but her wild shape is so cool, and the book explains why. And it's easily the best part of the entire book, or at least my favorite. Dork's training is going okay until the recruits start learning how to wild shave, and they turn into small animals like rabbits, squirrels, etc. Dork, on the other hand, while getting bullied during the whole wild shape segment, turns into a bear and threatens her bully. And then she gets stuck. And this is really interesting because all of the other recruits are struggling to maintain their wild shape. They're turning into squirrels and rabbits, and they're, they can only do so for a few minutes. And here's Doric is a brown bear and can't turn back. And the reason that her trainer gives is that you have to want to be yourself again. Let that sink in for a moment because I thought that was the coolest thing. The reason Doric can wild shape as much as a 20th level druid, just as much as she wants all throughout the movie, is because she's so uncomfortable with herself. So she could just be an animal whenever, however long. Later on, when she's able to wild shape into an owlbear, the other druids acknowledge that she should not be able to do this. This is the first time they've ever seen a druid able to turn into a monster. So while all the other recruits are learning how to wild shape into bigger and better forms for longer periods of time, Doric is getting trained in reverse. She's basically at the point where she needs to be, she just needs to learn how to control it. So she's kind of getting dialed back and it's just really entertaining. All right, let's move on to the ending. It's not really noteworthy, but it's worth covering. After a year of her training, a forest fire threatens the Emerald Enclave settlement and the Druids have to scramble together to start evacuating nearby towns. Doric is able to use her tiefling fire resistance to enter burning homes and save people. The townsfolk are worried about a monster in a cave nearby that could be disturbed by the fire and may also threaten the townsfolk while they're traveling. Doric goes to investigate and finds that the cave belongs to an owlbear now, and she also finds that her bully went there to try to deal with the monster himself, and failed. In an attempt to prove how awesome he is and how he can be like Doric, he tries to transform into a brown bear to hold off the owlbear, and he gets wrecked. Doric is unable to save him, and she sort of has this spiritual bond with the owlbear, and she's able to help relocate it. And it's at this point she learns how to turn into the owlbear. She doesn't reveal this fact to the Emerald Enclave, at least not at first. And after the fire has been dealt with, she takes a portal back to the Wood Elf village that she came from. And she also brings along her friend, the furball, Joannis. At this point, she has been gone from the Wood Elves for an entire year, and there's some weird tension between her childhood friend and her new friend, the furball. The humans are still clearing the land, and they've actually expanded while Doric was away. So the Wood Elves are planning to mount an offensive to deal with the human lumber camps. And with the help of Doric's overpowered owlbear wild shape ability, it's no issue. And as I mentioned earlier, in the movie, the Emerald Enclave are here at this Wood Elf village. So at some point, maybe the Emerald Enclave thought that they needed to help out in Neverwinter Wood due to what was going on. And it took me a while to figure out who this was, or at least speculate, because her name is never mentioned in the movie, and I was really hoping that there would be a reference to her in the book. At first, I thought it was her childhood friend, Toriath, because the girl tied to the post is a wood elf, but she calls out in defense to the Emerald Enclave, so maybe? The Emerald Enclave will never relent. 
justice cannot be killed. It could just be a random elf, but you know, where's the where's the fun in that? All right, that is Dork's backstory. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know how YouTube works. Hit some buttons, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this summary. If you have any questions, I can I can answer them. I tried to keep this as brief as possible and go into too much detail. There's some little stuff that happened, but none of it's really referenced in the movie. So I intentionally left it out. I just wanted to cover the good stuff. And honestly, if you want to know more, just read the book. It's not that long, pretty easy, pretty short read. I think it's only like $10 on Amazon. I think it's worth it. I, it's, especially if you enjoyed the D&D movie, I think it's worth it. So if you want to be a part of this D&D community, Make sure you join the Discord. Link is in the description. We also have a Reddit now for DM Hotline. And as always, I'll see you at sundown.